Good morning, welcome to Show Studio. This is our second and last panel on Couture. Couture uh, ended last night in Paris with Balma. So this was the first Balma Couture show by Olivier Roussin and the first after 16 years, the last being uh, the one by Oscar de la Renta uh, 16 years ago. So a long time without a Couture show by Balma. Um, we all watched it already, we have many, many opinions, and I have a great panel of experts to discuss it, and I would like the panelists to introduce themselves, please. Hello, my name is Gareth Chow, uh, I'm a stylist, and also I just finished my Master's in Media in London College of Fashion. Hi, I'm Mandy Leonard, and I'm a fashion consultant. Hi, I'm Bianca Saunders, I'm a menswear designer. Hi, I'm Theo White, I'm a fashion stylist, art director, and the founder of Theo White Zine. Great, so I expect a lot because um, judging from the discussion I had previous this panel in my office with my young colleagues, that's going to be an interesting one. The uh, opinions were very, um, uh, <laughs> how to say, very strong and very different. So I had young people that hated it and young people that loved it and everything in between. So that will make uh, for a very good panel. Um, I would start to have a little bit of a more general discussion before going into the looks um, for themselves. And I would start by saying, um, Olivier Roustin said that um, to do a couture show for him was to be free of any commercial restraint so he could get his um, creativity freed. He wanted to ask himself the question, what is couture in 2019? And he wanted to have a dialogue with uh, Pierre Balmain. That's why he went heavily into the archives, I would add, like Mandy and I were saying before, into Thierry Mugler's archive as well. But that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, he, so he came out with his uh, first couture show that he did in the store that they're building in uh, Rue Saint-Honoré or, or Avenue uh, Saint-Honoré. Uh, they did it in a quite smaller environment, smaller than usual. Usually they have these big, you know, 600 people shows. That was much more uh, couture salon style. And, uh, and uh, well, yeah, so... Do you I think could... it was that, or do you think he was just a bit nervous? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> it yeah. could have been a little bit nervous, but then when you see the show, I don't think it's a very humble show, so... I don't know. Well, let's start. What, did, what, what, what would you like to say in general before going into details, any of you? Well, I think for me this collection is quite complicated. Mm -hmm. I first finished watching the whole collection of Vogue Runway last night. I think it definitely, for me, it kind of feels like Olivier kind of let his creativity out of his cage. So he has many ideas in one collection. But personally, I do, I do really like the collection in the beginning because I like the color, I like the color palette and I like all the colors he used. And I do think it's very unusual for Balmain to represent such a bold, wild collection. Because I, I think for me, this <coughs> the whole silhouette and the, the styling, the makeup is pretty wild. And I would, because I was expecting something maybe slightly similar to what he used to do for the ready to wear, which is always very sexy and very feminine. And quite dark and metallic as well. Mm -hmm. um, but this one seems like he erased a lot of um, pop culture influence that he always got inspired from, and turned into a very soft, subtle color palette with this um, strong combination of so many different um, craftsmanship and elements in the clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite hard to say in the beginning, actually, because it's I think I'm standing the mutual point. I, I don't know if I should say it's really bad or really good. Because I think it's, it's, it's neither of them. <laughs> That's a good one. What do you think, Mandy? Um, yeah, it makes me think about who the customer is. And, you know, I don't know whether I'm being naive. Would, is, a, is a couture customer a different customer to the ready to wear? Would that be a normal situation? Because, um, you know, you had Celine Dion at um, one of the couture shows, and the hashtag seemed to be executive realness. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can actually, you know, you forget that couture isn't just occasion wearing parties and special occasions. You know, these women wear them in the day. It's their, their daily wardrobe. So, uh, you know, I can't, I can't actually see what you can take for that. For that. Um, 
And I loved all the pearls, the oversized pearls. And there were only two of those, and I just wish he'd really gone into it. And generally, I thought it was a bit of a mishmash, to be honest. I, I know the pearls like the unifying thread, but um, it just seems like, like you say, he let himself go, but no one's really harnessed him. Like there's no yeah, di there's specific focus. direction. Yeah. In yeah. There's Which a is why, you know, I've, wor focus. I've worked with a lot of designers over the years, um, and occasionally you get one who doesn't want to work with a stylist. I don't, I don't know who he works with. He's obviously got his advisors. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's a good thing because they've got a very definite point of view, but you forget that they're in their bubble the whole, the whole of the um, run-up to the show, and they really need an outside person to come in and say, um, oh, that, that feather scarf is so wonderful. Why doesn't the, the model just come out in, like like be nude and just wear this scarf. You know, you've got to have that outside challenge. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I think a stylist is very important, no matter what. Um, I just thought there was like, for a first, I guess, um, couture collection, there was like five different collections in it. Mm. And like, he could have like maybe- um, Absolutely. Yeah, like drawed it out a bit more. So like the first two looks, that could have been a whole collection. Like I thought they were really strong. Like there was a lot of like the power, best. like yeah, powerful like lines in it, um, and like sharp um, tailoring. And then towards the end, it just gets really like poofy and very like pretty and pink. Um, and it's just like it's very hard to focus on it because then he's in to, like put all this like makeup and um, mm. the hair look with the whitewashed um, models and um, faces. Um, but usually like his collections, they don't really have like much. Um, glamour with the hair and the makeup, so it's a bit different to kind of introduce this in his work. There was a lot of reaction about that makeup, wasn't there? People really yeah. didn't like that whitewash makeup. I mean, I, I kind of surprised he would do this kind of makeup on the couture collection, because usually for the Balmain fashion show, they do this very strong, sexy, mm. feminine makeup, or like this glam look that's ready to make the celebrity go to red carpet, but this one is definitely something. It, I would imagine like Iris Van Urban or some brands would do this makeup, but. I think it was a little yeah. bit too little on the pearl theme, you know, the pearlescent theme that went even over the face and over the body, you know, the last model who's uh, half topless, she's got it all over her body, so there's this pearl theme that it's I love the idea very, of the pearl. I, I think it went a little bit too literal, there are more than a million Swarovski pearls in the show I read. There's, you know, the big pearls, there's the bags with the new logo, there's... Theo, what do you think? Um, I love the first, like, nine looks. I thought that has something going on. He started the white, which was really strong. Um, this with the embroidery and the feathers, that was really great. I think after that, and he introduced a bit of denim as well with the embroideries, but I think after those five, nine looks, it kind of went just all over the place. I was really confused. There was no direction. It was kind of just like, okay, we're going to follow on from the spring summer collection, just do bigger and add more and just make it more elaborate, just to call it couture. But it wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't, I was really confused about the whole thing after the first nine looks. It just went, there was no direction, there was no aspirations to go somewhere. It just, it was just random, random. Well, I think, I mean, we all, echo each other in some ways, you know, more or less. And I think maybe the question here is, I mean, couture is not an easy thing. You know, couture needs maturity, but couture needs especially self-assurance. And I think the non-focus and the going a little bit in all direction here showed that, you know, it's a first, and so we have to give him a chance to improve. But maybe that was the problem, the lack of focus, because it's a little bit insecurity. As I said at the beginning, was it a small venue because he wasn't self-assured enough to open it up to many, but I, then I it's all over respect, the place. I completely respect the intimacy of Couture, and I think that if he's doing a Couture collection in the first, for the first time in his tenure, um, you know, he wants to... Um, adhere to the old school, you know, so mm -hmm. he wants a salon, and I completely get that. I think we'd all do that. Um, just going what Theo said, I think the jeans were incredible. And I think even though, even though I found the show incoherent and it came across as random and a bit gauche, when I actually saw on my Instagram feed everyone's backstage videos, 
the um, the fabrics and the pearls and all these you know when you see things on the catwalk and you you go on the news wires today and it's all front on front on you're really doing a disservice to what is in, is actually incredible pieces so if you saw those as individual looks they're incredible um, but altogether they jar too much i like jarring i like things to be mm. a bit wrong but and that pearl textile that was beautiful yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely like a strong potential to like details. Probably why I like the show was so small because when it's a lot bigger, it's very hard to see, see it, see it um, up close. And I think we were talking before, weren't we, about you know Bianca just had her incredible men's presentation. Was it five colours play? Yeah. And you know, I just think you know going to see something and immersing yourself in it, um, you get so much more out of it. Than, than, a, than a catwalk. And everyone's gonna want catwalk shots for sure, but the visual texture you get from the presentation and what I saw from the backstage shots where mm -hmm. it was these, you know, really going close up and you could see the, fa the, the facets of the fabric. Um, There's no doubt that couture seen from close and touched um, adds to it because the, 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 the skills that go into making it are probably what matters the most. Um, but if I may, for me, it's not, I mean, if the theme is what is couture in 2019, which reads like, has it, I mean, does it need to be modern? And probably the, the answer is yes. And I'm thinking about, you know, yesterday we saw two masterpieces by John Galliano for Margiela and Pierpaolo Piccioli for Valentino. That shows maturity. I mean, that's it when, you know, where, where, where the skills to make it is understood, that shows what it means to do couture for a modern woman in two opposite directions. And this, in the middle, I think, shows that Olivier is younger and probably, if I may say, not ready, because why did he need fashion. to go in all those directions? Yeah, business of fashion, I just glanced up this morning and I think their first line was it was a little bit immature. Oh, Angelo Flaccavento, yeah. Yeah, well, I agree. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I have a real issue with everyone, you know, everyone saying about modernity, he's spouting it in all his rhetoric when he's speaking to the press, you know, it's something modern. It's almost like he's so paranoid it won't be modern. But actually, if you have something really beautiful and classic, that is a fantastic canvas mm -hmm. upon couldn't which agree to present more. something really modern. I couldn't agree more. And then it shows confidence as well and restraint. I couldn't agree more. And this, for me, and correct me. I love that look. That was one of my yeah. favorites. This, for me, it's a little bit old-fashioned at times. There are some looks that I think they're a little bit retro, not modern. I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. really pin it, but... I guess he was trying to, like, come up, um, remove himself from this whole, like, not celebrity culture of things, but just be seen as more as a classic designer, because he wants to be remembered as being, like, very memorable and um, making a change in fashion. So I think it's probably what you try to do with this collection because there's a lot of elements of like, it needs this, it needs that, and then still bring in what like signature belt to Barman as well too, so yeah. He's into the whole celebrity culture as well. So, so if you think about actual real sales for a collection like this, it is going to be those mainstream celebrities oh, that yeah. he already dresses. So I, I, I imagine that you know, he's not even worried about that element of them selling because he knows he's got that ready customer. Here we see the Kardashians yeah. in, in Olivier Rostin, typical uh, Balmain <laughs> by Olivier Rostin, including the little one. Look, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the Chris I think, Gangster, yeah. Gangster Chris. Gangster yeah. Chris. Yeah. I think that Balmain sort of got more famous and more reputation because of the Kardashian families. Because even though despite um, how many people hate the Kardashian families that don't like the, t the style or the taste. But you still have a lot of followers and consumers. They will go, go to the Balmain shop to ask the sales associates to say, I want the dress, just like the Kim wore on Instagram feed. I think for the, for the consumer point of view, I think Olivia was very smart to have this group of friends that does huge influence on social media to, to try to um, lift the reputation and sales of the brand. Um, from that point, I think this collection, from the press point of view and celebrity point of view, um, I think it can potentially bring him a diversity of celebrities he can dress, because it's not the typical image of Balmain. 
and you do have a lot of diversities in the, in the styles. It's very complicated, and I think it's a, it's a collection that you, you can divide in many different sections. For example, this with a tool, and I don't know how to say this look, but it's just something Kardashian <laughs> wouldn't wear, isn't it? Wouldn't? Yeah, but, uh, wood. I think they wouldn't wear. I think I, I would picture some, some, it's somebody more like... Fitting. Yeah, but yeah. a more yeah. discerning um, clientele would be put off by the, well, it's death by association. And I think that that's why all these um, fashion brands, you know, all the backstory, who they associate with, um, the stuff that they're into, the kind of um, behind the image narrative. I think that's where you're drawn into a brand and you want to associate, oh, that's cool, that's what I'm feeling, that I feel comfortable, or I, or I don't feel comfortable, but I want to be a part of that. And I also have a, you know, I think just lately, work myself, you know, when I work on projects and I think of brands to involve or I recommend brands to be involved, you know, more and more we're very interested in someone with a very small following, what they, they think. I always, you know, like, um, I always love to know what other people think about something. And I find it fascinating. But um, I think... Um, Five million followers. Well, what is that five million followers made up of? Yeah. I, you know, that, I, I don't true. think it's the most discerning, and I, I wonder. You know, that number crunching on that level with a with a couture collection, as you say, it's in a small salon that doesn't match to a major five million no. follower. That's very wise what you just said, and I think you know, like it or not, we cannot deny that uh, Olivier was very strong in creating his hashtag Balma. Uh, army. army, thank yeah. you. Palma <laughs> Army in, in modernized the way of marketeering the brand, but then, but then again, you know, couture is something sacred and probably it doesn't need all those many followers because it's supposed to be niche and elite and aspiring and I don't know if that's the way to make me aspire to that. But also, you know, let's go back to the aesthetic. I, when it's beautiful, people stand up and applaud. You can be, it can be your kind of thing or not, mm -hmm. you just feel the beauty. Here, it's, it's dividing opinion, so there's something don't tone deaf. Well, you could say that he did it on purpose, because he wants to chapter. think so? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably, mm -hmm. that, that's a good point. I left, the show left me feeling cold for some reason. Um, I saw the Valentino show yesterday. Mm. That was amazing. And I saw that and I just felt really warm and, you know, I wanted to be in that room and I wanted to, you know, so well said. To capture it all, wear one of those dresses, aspirational. <laughs> um, the music, the whole, whole vibration, I saw this show and I just felt really cold. <laughs> um, but it's interesting, I think someone commented on the makeup saying that he was trying to have the, ma the models look like mannequins or like paintings. Sculptures. Sculptures, Sculptures yes, statues. Um, but I'm not sure, it's just a, with the hair, the white hair, it, it kind of just, it really just bounces off the collection, it doesn't really fit into it. Doesn't it distract a little yeah, bit? Totally, yeah. totally distracting. I think it looks good on like the, the black models because it yeah, makes them, yeah. yeah. But on, you know, on the white models, it kind of looks a bit, um, you know, when you say like futuristic, it's usually like white hair, like white eyelashes, and it's just a bit um, typical in it's terms of the makeup look. Still typical. Yeah. And, and not ethereal. Yeah. That's what he might have tried to depict. It just, I think it just distracts it from like the details that he tried to actually put in. So if there was less of that, it doesn't it'd probably probably been, yeah, it would be a focus. I found it frustrating because I, I, for me, the most important thing of a show is the casting. It's something that I think makes or breaks a show. And I was really frustrated that I couldn't identify a lot of the models. And then when I went on um, the, the websites that show the runway looks, um, they're so slow, even after all these years, they're so slow to get the names of the models up. I've tried to make this process really fast, but the teams, at, you know, um, Vogue, L, wherever, who do, who do this, they, um, they never, they're so short-staffed. They never mentioned the models. They're so short-staffed, but, you know, a junior mm. person in the team could do this. But I remember after one of the shows I did last season, well, a year ago, I worked closely with the casting director um, and, and, and said, you know, as soon as that show's over, I want the running order. 
Um, and we got it, and I got it straight, to, and I, I knew I had the right person, and it still didn't get up there. And I just think that, like we're sat here, you know, and how fast the industry moves, as soon as you, um, let's say at the end of the day, you want, let's say you've been out and you haven't been at the shows, you want to study, you want the immediacy of it. And actually, when you look through the looks, the, who the model is is crucial. It's those. Brand uh, let, let me ask you I mean, why is it for someone who's a civilian, not a fashion expert, isn't the look of the model more than who she is? Why, yes, why are it's the industry so... who have the opinion that filters down to them? Okay, so the name of the model is important for the industry people. The name of the model is, a, is, a, is as crucial as the soundtrack to the show. Mm. I think. Obviously, the names are, to have familiar faces on the runway is important because, you know, obviously everything's on social media now. Everyone, you know, depending on the followers the, the models have, et cetera, the amount of clout that they bring to the brands and the shows. But I don't think that's really... If you're casting for a show, surely the most important thing is to cast the right models that fit into the vibration of what you're trying to sell Absolutely. for the shows. Yes, but I want to know who those models are, because oh, yeah, totally. I couldn't see I, them in this I, one. I agree with you as well. I know that I search for models after shows and it's not listed. You know, as it's in, frustrating, isn't it? Previously, you can always go on that. You know who that model is. It's not anymore. And, and yeah. I want to know who the new ones are that they've chosen and yeah. why they've chosen them. I just, li I just, I think that's, you know, they send, spend so much time on the casting and the messaging. Like, for example, I think one of the biggest things at, at Couture this time has been um, Max and Finn being in the shows. You know, that's just so refreshing to see them modelling um, in Couture shows. It's yeah. just a great new um, freshness, I think. When you talk about um, Couture being modern, that is the new face of modern couture, having mm. those girls appear in the, in the runway. I, I think it's quite good that he didn't have the faces that everyone personally kind of recognised, like the Kendall Jenners. But funny you know, funny enough, he said in an interview, and I don't remember which one, he said, I guess the casting of my show was even better than the collection. And then, actually, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> but he yeah. did post... Say, from, there you go. He was so proud of that. Black white model, we don't yeah, see the difference. He was so proud like, of that, but, it was, but no one knows who they were. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can see who some of them are, but, I, you know, you can't... I probably recognise two, but they all look the same, which it's voluntary. There's um, Ducky here. She's topless. That's who he's posted on his Instagram. Uh. And he's, the captions are iconic. So I find it quite weird that he'll post this image twice saying that this is iconic. And it's like, is that the message? What is the message of the show? What is? Yeah, yeah what well, is the message? actually the, the cleanest look in the whole show, isn't <laughs> it? You one, know, it's yeah. pared down. Yeah. And, and, and her pose is majestic. It's really quite beautiful. I think that's one of yeah. my favourite looks. Yeah. Of the yeah, it's who was, who, some of you was mentioning, I was mentioning Grace Jones. We were, oh, yeah, we were Grace Jones. Yeah. Can we elaborate on that? Because this reminds me a little bit of, but you know, Grace Jones is one of my icons. I don't think Grace, and I don't, she, she wouldn't like. We have to pay to respect to Philip Tracy and Grace Jones. I don't think she'd wear that hat. No. no. But, <laughs> but why, why did you saying? think? No, but in the I first two like looks, why if they, they, they thought about probably Grace got the jump I think it was just more like the first like nine looks, like the power sort of tailoring and like the sharp, um, yeah. the sharp corners of it. Like, what's my shoe? The, the, se the second one. Yeah, yeah. Me too. The <laughs> I see Thierry Mugler. But for somehow from the third look, the kind of, for me, it's kind of like kimono inspired. It reminds me of Alexander McQueen. Yeah. And also the feathered look on the six. Chanel. You know what I would have loved in that show if they'd have really exaggerated it because when Grace Jones used to model in the shows it was so affected and, and um, it just would have been great in this because it would have shown the clothes, it's still old school. Yeah. And so it would she, have had a bit of humor. She would have been there because there's only no, one Grace Jones you can't. But you know, the model really having imitate. a bit of a swagger rather than... Uh, it's very hard to imitate. I think there are two people that can't be imitated. One is Grace Jones and one is Naomi. And that's why when Naomi's needed, it's Naomi. You see what I mean? Tyra Banks was always very Tyra lyrical. Tyra Banks, yeah. <laughs> you know, Grace Jones. Oh. The girls in the 90s, the models, they were, I, I'm obsessed with like 90s fashion and fashion shows. Me too. And you watch <coughs> the girls, you know, you realise why they were supermodels or why they were household yeah. names, because they bring the vibes to the shows. You know, they're selling it, they're sashaying, twirling. And now it's because, as you say, you don't know these models. You don't. They don't bring. You could recognise them by the walk. Exactly. I remember Naomi walk like yeah. this pony walk, Naomi and you could recognise them. Yeah. Great. By the way they walk. Now, 
you don't have the difference walking. with the catwalk right now. You walk very fast. Yeah. I feel sometimes when, when I when I go to a fashion show, I can't really see the looks. I can't really go through single looks because they, they just walk so fast. They literally like half running, finish the whole show, and you just yeah. it's just too fast. One too of one of the shows, Naomi scared. Campbell was sat um, when the model came around the corner. Naomi Campbell was sat just near where she turned, and she looked quite uncomfortable. And actually. It, I was uncomfortable watching it because she couldn't see the outfit. They were coming round and she only saw it as it had gone past her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. It's, so it happened to me so many times. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you just see it's an gone. angle, you know? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, some, you know, the perks of being at the show is that you see it in movement, sometimes mm -hmm. even seeing a film. I wouldn't... I would have loved to see a, a video of this and hear the music and understand because I was listening to our own Georgie last night in her review in a car and I felt that she she was taking it from far and and and, and saying a lot of things at the beginning. I didn't know where she wanted to go because right, but uh, then Georgie. she had some fascination about the whole thing by being Did there. Did she have a briefing with them? Or was it just what he was saying backstage? No, because, yeah, sometimes, mostly she goes backstage, yeah. but, um, you know, she's good at what she does. But she, yesterday, she didn't go straight to the point. We didn't know if she liked it or not. Yeah. And so I guess by being there, you liked some atmosphere that was there, yeah. but she wasn't sure about the looks. Yeah. But we only see the looks, so we don't have the atmosphere because there's no film, right? There's no video of this, so we don't know. But you know, the, we, you handed us the show notes when we got here this morning, the show statement. Yeah. And it's such a, it doesn't yes, tell you anything. It just, it's, it's very um, cliche. And um, if we had to write a statement, you know, if a student had to write a statement, that's immediately what they'd write. Um, and I think, you know, having the confidence or respecting Couture, you know, it could have been a poem or it could have been but you just said it, having the confidence. And that, I think these notes echo what I think was a lack of self-assurance, a lack of maturity. It, not everybody can do couture, not yet. But maybe it's the people around him. Maybe yeah. um, mm, do you think there, so? isn't, there isn't someone there. Um, I don't know his ins and outs of his team. I was asking myself, is it, you know, who's got the whip, who's calling the control kind of thing? Has he got a big team or is it just him? So it's just, quite a big team. I mean, Balmain mm. is quite a big company now, and... Uh, yeah, but you don't know how he... He's very young, he's very precocious, and you don't know how they feel around him. You know, you need those people that are going to challenge you and say, hey, you know what, you need to get out of here for two days, get out of Paris for two days, mm. um, and not even involve yourself, don't look at your Instagram and come back. He needs that palate cleanser, as it were, just to keep perspective. Yeah, but... I think this shows that he doesn't have that. Mm. Probably yeah. he is a little bit the king in there. And, and you know, sometimes I think creative people need to be left creating. I wouldn't want them to be, you know, assaulted by merchandising or business, but sometimes they need to be given a frame in which to work to make it, you know, possible. And, and maybe nobody helps him. I don't know who, do we, do we know whose style? this show? Do we know if there was a stylist at all? I just feel there's so many voices and I feel that... Exactly. There's so yeah. many voices and I can only imagine what it's like in the House of Bama and, you know, there just feels that there's a lot of voices, you know, loads of decisions, you know. Too many cooks in the kitchen, you don't really get a good suit, do you? Don't you think that too many cooks are in his head? Yeah. I yeah. do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and yeah. I used to love... Um, I don't know, Mugler, or I used to this or that, and I want to talk to Mr. Balma himself. And mm. you need to be self-assured to then focus and make one choice. I mean, as in, with my work as a stylist, as a creative, I, I'm inspired by so many things. Differently, I pick inspiration out from the icons of the past and just everyday things. But I use that and. and you know, put it in my own way, you know, how would I, you know, everything's really been done to be honest, you know, when you look at references, you can see that in a lot of work, fashion, art, photography nowadays, you can see the references and where everyone's picked that up from. But, you know, you haven't done it and it's how you do it and how you put that out into the world. But this, with, with Olivier and Bauman, I kind of just feel like it's always, I can see the references from like Mugler, um, just from different houses, see, and he's kind of picked the bits from that and put it in, and that's, 
That's what this feels like. So I think it's okay to do that and yeah, have that totally. mishmash and, and kind of, um, you know, avarice. Um, but but it's just not gelling, is it? No. As a, as a, it, it comes across, you know, verging on, um, you know, there's all that press about Condé Nast at the moment, designers paying 20 grand to be lifted in their in their show runway shots, and and this could this could be one of those, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but uh, one of the things issues I have with the brand is the vanity. I think he's so narcissistic, and you know, recently there was a, a picture on his Instagram of him nude, and it's almost like you know what what you know it's it's just. You can do that Shocking. when you're Mr. Saint Laurent and then you give us, you know, <laughs> amazing fashion. And again, you know, I probably shouldn't say that again, but you were saying everything has been done. It's hard to reference and be honest and authentic. But look at what John Galliano did yesterday. Look at what Pierpaolo did yesterday, for God's sake. Mm. Yeah, it's and, so and new and yet so... And the John Galliano, he, you did feel that he'd been let loose with his imagination. It was me. It but was, it was just incredible. incredible. Yeah. Like it or not, aesthetically, understand it or not, it was just a masterpiece, you know? It was just a lesson in fashion. Am I exaggerating? No, 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 no. Just oh. nodding, right? no. I hate to talk about the age thing because everything's so ageist now, but I think in this point with Olivia, it's definitely you have to think about his age and his experiences, you know? Think of John Galliano and the history that he's got, you know? The, the history... Uh, hence. In this, yeah. Hence, why not wait? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I could, and you know, Olivia is of our generation now, you know, everything's on, it's, it's technology, it's online, it's a show, 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 show and prove kind of generation. I kind of like, maybe you just need to accept it for this is what he is and that's him. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe as one of my young colleagues was saying this morning, this is a first. Uh, let's see, you know, how he matures through that, but mm. if, one thing he has and he's ready to wear, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that style, but one thing he has is a signature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it uh, Olivier Rousteing for Balmain. You will never guess this was Cara de la Vigne. Yeah. 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 The couture one collection. thing he has is a signature. There's no signature here. So if you yeah. want to do couture you, and you want a legacy, you have to find your signature. Mm. Yeah. Because that's, that's what I was thinking. Because usually I think Olivier holds a very strong DNA and signature looks for Balmain. Yeah. But for this couture collection, for somehow, if you cover the label of the brand, or you, you just randomly pick different looks of, and let me recognize which brand is it, I'm probably gonna say to you, I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna say to you, every different look is from different brand, because they are very diverse. But I can see from the spring summer collection here, um, he started to have his references of the silhouette and continue to the couture collection. Um, I do feel a little bit um, reminiscent from the material, the color, and also the textile mm. that just extended to the couture collection. Yeah, yeah, it's very much into white for sure. <laughs> yeah, and this kind of um, but, 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 but. seashell shape on the garments. Yeah, maybe also we were just watching his last ready-to-wear collection, and there are some looks that are bordering couture as far as make yeah. and yeah. complication and that's maybe also a problem because then where to go from there you know to make the difference in price for instance or I think for me this could be the Bauman couture yeah totally yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it's, totally. it's 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 it's, it's it's very it's wearable yeah. and also it's it's a lot higher standard compared to his previous ready-to-wear collection it looks fresher doesn't it yeah. yes totally. and it has the DNA totally. of the house and you have all you haven't lose all signature looks and um, the jackets, the dress, the shoulder pads, denim. The denim. I think you should have done more of the denim though yeah, to just make so a big, an actual so statement yeah. of it. Like I feel if you're gonna, I could feel a little um, in the tour, it should be Catherine, Catherine Hamnett vibe coming through there as well. Yeah. Don't you think that if he had done more denim in a couture show, it would have run the risk but, of But being those a denim jeans don't them. look like denim as it were. It's you know, it's just when they move you could see that yeah, if you look close yeah. Yeah. But but this denim? it's incredible. Yeah. This is denim. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when I first saw it I wasn't close. sure but I looked I saw a closer picture, I saw the details and it. it was really amazing. There's another look that's wearing denim trousers underneath. The, yeah, the white look, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Got the holes in it. It's, it's beautiful. 
Um, also, there's this big thing about his app, isn't it? It's a really expensive app. Yeah, um, and could, you could have watched the show in the making. Yeah, augmented yeah. reality, virtual yeah. reality. Okay. But do you really think that Not a enough. potential couture customer is watching the app, mm. immersed in it and no. shopping? No, that's my point. You know, it's not. That's not. I think it's more. It's more for the fans. The dressing gown. Yeah, it's, it's more for the. It's more for the fans, not for the customers. Yeah, modern couture. Yeah. That's what I mean. You know, the clothes have to be modern couture, not what's around it. And that's why even the denim. I I, I hear you when you say, what you say, but I didn't think it was incredible. Um, maybe that's subjective aesthetic, maybe it doesn't mean anything, I don't know. It's, I think also it's overthinking it, isn't it? It's just what we saw the runway looks and we've seen the show um, and what, what do you think? You can't start analysing what you think, it's just our first impression. Recently there was a tabloid picture of um, Michelle Moan, um, she's the woman that owns that laundry company um, and uh, what I noticed was that it was unmistakably Balmain that she was wearing. Mm. Okay. And it was the black lace with the gold buttons and these yeah. pants. And it looked incredible. And I was thinking to myself, oh my God, you know, she's, she's buying into these expensive clothes, but she actually looks amazing. And she had the new Celine handbag. And it really was an incredible look. It was look. adding modernity. Yeah, and, and it's almost like when something is as beautiful and well, as well cut as that, and almost like brutally executed, um, you, you know, celebrity can't touch that because, um, you know, even though this woman is almost like known as a mainstream um, celebrity, uh, if I was, you know, working and needed, those, you know, executive clothes, that would be a choice. I mean, it, unmistakably, the core tailoring is beautiful. And did it look modern? Yeah. It did. Well, it looked classic. Yeah, classic and modern. And I think yeah. classic and elegant is modern. I yeah, agree, yes, yeah. I agree. Uh, is this the woman we're thinking of? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard that, of her. That's not, not that, not <laughs> she. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. She yeah, no, she is. Yeah. But there's a picture of her at full length and, and it, it, it really looks great. And I thought, oh. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is this Balma look <laughs> that it's very recognizable. And I think that's a plus for a brand, you know, and that's why he's so successful and that's why the, the, the company is doing well. But that's why I think also you have to be careful when you do your first couture show because you don't want to tarnish that. And as you were saying, um, uh, he was almost more couture his last show and as Mandy was saying, he was fresher. It was more selfish. I don't, for. I don't think he's tarnishing it, anything. Uh, his brand. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, like we talked about the confidence, you know, could it have been a, a, a good move to have almost like opened a new Instagram, Balman Couture? Mm -hmm. Separating. Yeah, that's separate. what you mean. Mm -hmm. not, not that you don't want to damage the other brand, but just to almost like herald a new era and show the confidence to that era. And it's almost like you know, the sort of person that's going to start following this is someone who is engaged by it on, on whatever level they want. Rather yeah. than automatically your whole three million Balmain who are probably... Goes into that. Two yeah. million of that is um, the kids that like the H&M collaboration. Yeah, or just like to buy the jumper and T-shirts and Balmain. It's, I think, I think for, for this couture collection, I think they will face different kind of client. I think the previous clients probably wouldn't buy this kind of collection because it's so Yet. crazy. I think these clients, clients are pretty gonna... rich. Yeah. yeah, I, I think know. they're rich. I think they own their business because from my image of a Balmain woman, they, they have their own business. They're strong or they have this classic elegant style in the wardrobe. They don't want to be over dramatic on their style. Mm. Um, yeah, but somehow I just think this, this won't be their choice to go to a gala. Or the accessories are really strong, so I think it'll yeah. bring those clients, yeah. but I don't think it's going to bring... <laughs> no, but I don't like the, bra the, the, the yeah. bracelets, the bangles. I think yeah. I was like into much. it, yeah. but not in this context, it's more of a bling. It's a new logo. Yeah, yeah more styled yeah. differently, something else, but I love, I love the bracelet. It's a way to launch I, the new logo. I do, yeah. think, I do think, though, that when I saw those bracelets, part of that Chanel pie is there for the taking, because I don't think Chanel is... For, for a young person, um, I, I really don't think Chanel is is hitting the spot the last few seasons. 
It's funny you say that because we were discussing this this morning and I was saying I'm not a Chanel person either, but if only Balmain Couture and Chanel Couture existed and I had the money, I would not hesitate, I would buy Chanel, but maybe it's more, uh, first of all, yesterday, yes, I, I agree the, with their that. show yesterday was for me the best in a long time. I agree with that, oh but God. the mainstream customer hacks into the accessories. Oh, accessories, yeah. sorry, yeah. And, and, yeah. and, you know, there was bags in this collection, jewellery, what have you, and, you know, there's a, a lucrative layer there. But are we expecting to see any of this on the red carpet of the Oscar next month? Some of it. I mean, yes. I mean, I yes. so, I some of the shoes flats. I'm sure I saw some flats somewhere. Uh, are you expecting to see this on the no. red carpet? <laughs> you think, said I yes. Think, I think some people will. I'm not, I'm not saying it's the well. coolest. Oh, yeah, some person pieces. That's going to keep wearing. They're probably yeah. going to receive critiques <laughs> because I think it will it will appear very differently when you wear on um, even a celebrity, not on a non-model person. Maybe the last look. Maybe with a, the teeth covered. Yeah, I want to see last, probably yeah, Rihanna um, in it. I, I also had a bit of an issue with this show with how skinny the models looked. I'm yeah. really not the sort of person that gets bothered about stuff like that. You know, I just want fab gear to work, <laughs> fab clothes. Yeah. Um, but some of the looks, one of those bulbous looks, the model's legs were just ridiculous. And, and it, I found it really unsettling. Because it's too skinny or... I think the problem is... Like he could have had, a, he could have had model. bigger models in that show. That would have yeah. been modern. Yeah, I think the problem is he chose very skinny models, right? And he do this white painted makeup that make the model paler and even skinnier. I think maybe that's Honestly, the reason you feel I, pretty I hear cold. your point, but I don't see the skinniness here in but a disturbing way. I've seen other way. shots. I've seen other shots. Okay. <coughs> um, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> unless <laughs> unless uh, we, we, we miss something, but... Um, I do like that. Um, I like the color. Yeah. I really like the do color. Do you like those little color? I think they're a bit old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Blue one I on the back. Yeah, I, because amazing. I like old fashioned colors. Is that like like that? Yeah, the pastel color combination, really. <coughs> I'm thinking about that gloves on one side, and I'm thinking about what uh, uh, Givenchy did the other night with that beautiful Klein, blue Klein, um, what's the material? Um, latex uh, glove that was so extraordinary and so modern and then oh, i see this and i'm like mm. there's a mist that, there that look that we were just looking at um with the bulbous skirt it reminds me of my research this time uh about a year ago when um gareth Pugh and quite a few of us were getting together for our chris we do a very early christmas dinner yeah and we always have a theme and it was going to be um, Russian something, I can't remember. And I remember all my visuals that I shared with the group. And, it, you know, those um, buildings in Russia. <laughs> it just reminds me of the onion, onion roofs on them. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. That's a very good note to <coughs> our panel. So let's wait and see what Olivier will do for his next, next couture show. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>